so now let's go for the quantification in max quant. Uh, I'm going to go through quickly the label, um, the quantification max quant when you have to deal with labeled data sets. And then uh, Carlo will continue with the LFQ. Uh, like after me is Carlo, that he's going to talk about label fee. And I'm going to talk about MS1 level labeling and MS2 level labeling. And for each one of these data sets, we have different uh, algorithms how uh, that we're using to actually quantify uh, the peptides and the proteins. <clears throat> so let's see what we are doing in MS1 level labeling to quantify. So uh, in MS1 level labeling, again, I will use as an example, Silac, uh, light and heavy. But of course, this is the, uh, similar to all other MS1 level uh, labels that you, you, should, you can have. We have the light and the heavy, uh, for example, and then we want to uh, find uh, the ratio in between them uh, to quantify actually. Uh, and the easiest thing that we can do and someone can think immediately is that, okay, I will like sum up the intensities in the heavy and I will sum up the intensities in the light and then I will take the ratio. But this is not what we are actually doing. And that's the reason if you go actually, actually to the output tables and we will have like three columns. We will have uh, the um, light column, the heavy column, and then the ratio. Uh, and if you divide the light with the heavy, then you will not get the number that we get in the ratio. And this is not uh, wrong. This is just because we, not, we don't just divide. We do something a little bit more sophisticated uh, to calculate the uh, ratios between the light and the heavy. But what we're actually doing, what we're actually doing is we're going to do point-wise um, ratio determination. So you will go scan by scan and you will... Uh, calculate uh, the ratio between the light and the heavy. So then after that, you will have a lot of um, uh, ratios and then you will take the median out of it. Median in general is very robust. So if, uh, if you have three ratios and then you have one outlier, it will give you uh, the correct uh, median, the correct value. But also if you have coeluting peptides here, so for example, if you have like, um, at the tail of one uh, of the features, another peptide that coelutes, then it needs to uh, overlap with your uh, feature more than 50% of the 3D feature to be able to change your result. Uh, so that's uh, great. Uh, and also, I mean, if it was the case, then uh, you will have even problems even uh, when you do the 3D feature detection. So that's how we do it. So we do point-wise ratio determination, and then you take the median out of all of these ratios here. So yeah, you do the ratios and then you take the median. But uh, another thing that it can happen when you have MS1 level labeling is that you can have uh, like um, uh, only the light or only the heavy uh, in your results. Uh, so this can happen for different reasons. So first is like um, the biological reason that uh, you only have uh, your peptide in one of your samples, but not in the other. But also it can happen because uh, maybe the feature in one of the, either in the light or in the heavy, it's like um, uh, under the noise. And uh, so you cannot actually see it. So it's um, uh, out of the dynamic range. Or it can happen that it's uh, inside the dynamic range, but the, the signal is uh, very low uh, or not like good enough uh, for the max quant to find to find it. So, uh, so for these um, cases, what max quant will do, uh, uh, we will uh, not. Uh, what you can do if you enable it, enable it, is that you can do requantify, and this is an algorithm in max quant that helps with these cases. So what we will actually, what it will actually happen is that let's say that you have <clears throat> an uh, like uh, orphan uh, isotope um, uh, pattern uh, and uh, for this, you don't have the pair. Uh, so for this uh, isotope pattern, you don't know uh, the, la uh, the label. You don't know if it's heavy or the light. Uh, it has this, uh, the heavy or the light uh, label. Uh, but what we can do, we can give it uh, this isotope pattern uh, if there is an MSMS <clears throat> triggered in this isotope pattern, we can give it again to the Andromeda sets engine 
uh, and you can give it <coughs> with um, uh, as a variable modification the heavy and the light uh, silac label. <coughs> so uh, then uh, Andromeda, uh, if uh, um, it has a successful identification, then it will tell you if it was if this peptide had heavy uh, heavy silac or light silac. And now, for example, in this specific example, it uh, gave you the identification and it told you that uh, this is a uh, peptide with heavy lysine. And since we know that it was a heavy lysis, now we can go into um, the MS1 um, uh, spectra, spectrum and find uh, the pair because we know exactly where to look for. Uh, so uh, since uh, the heavy lysine is eight um, Daltons heavier, uh, and since we have a peptide with charge two, then we're going to find uh, the peptide in these specific uh, places. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, we do. And now you have the pair, and now you can actually uh, do the quantification also for this um, isotope pattern that before it was alone, didn't have the pair. Uh, the thing is that when you're actually doing your quantification, you should, uh, it, it, it's, I guess, you have to understand what the quantification uh, does here. So it has uh, like a tendency to underestimate uh, the ratios. So you should be aware of it. So it depends on you and your experiment if you want to use it or not. So for example, if you want uh, to have at your output tables proteins that uh, have um, a big uh, regulation, let's say, so big regulation between um, uh, the, the, exper the samples, then you should enable it. And if you want to have proteins in your sample that so big regulation, and, but you don't care a lot about the accuracy of the ratio, then you should enable it. But if you really rely on the uh, accuracy, uh, the precision of your um, of your ratios, then you shouldn't enable it because again, your quantification has the tendency to underestimate the ratios. So, but even if we do requantify, uh, again, we will do some steps to uh, make sure that uh, we underestimate the ratio as little as possible. First of all, when we are now in protein level, we are going to see how many of the um, uh, sequences that correspond to this protein are identif are, were identified by requantified features. So do we have sufficient many non-requantified features? First of all, how many is sufficient? Uh, we said uh, we put our threshold in three, but not three features, but three different peptide sequences. So we want to have at least three features that correspond to three different sequences for the protein. And then, and then, uh, if we actually have uh, 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 three, at least three non-requantified feature uh, sequences, uh, then uh, we use uh, uh, only the non-requantified and we uh, discard the requantified features. Uh, but then if we don't have um, three, then we have to use the requantified features, but then we're actually going to do something else as well on top of that. So we're going to check if there is a correlation between the intensity and the ratio. And why we are saying that, uh, why there should be a correlation between these two. So when you have um, these um, cases when one of the peak is visible, but the other uh, is uh, probably under the limit of detection, uh, then it depends on the intensity of the light in this case, if you will be able to uh, measure the correct um, ratio. So for example, let's say that you have a protein of a ratio of 20, then it depends on the intensity of the light here, if you will be able to measure this or not. And then it depends on the intensity of the light, what ratio you're going to measure. Because again, you have to understand that now we're going to fight against the noise. So, um, uh, so yes, you check uh, which model fits your database. So first you try to fit uh, a linear fit into your data. Uh, and um, you do like a test of stream and ground correlation and uh, the p-value uh, should be less than 0 0.005 to uh, get this linear fit. 
Uh, but if that is the case, then what we are going to do, you're going to take the log ratio of the um, pep, uh, of the feature that has the biggest log uh, intensity, uh, but uh, you're going to take the, so for example here, this one, so you're going to take the log ratio of this, but you're going to take the log ratio of the fitted line, so this one here. So, um, uh, this half time, half seven minutes. So, um, yes, so of course, um, we cannot extrapolate because we don't know where to stop. So, this is the best that we can do. And this is the um, uh, biggest, uh, let's say, uh, so the ratio uh, could be uh, this or bigger. So, this is the highest um, constraint on our ratio the lowest constraint on a relation or on a ratio. Uh, so you do that, but also you do another fit. You also fit uh, the uh, linear class plateau fit. So what happens is that at some point, if you go here, at some point, so again, if you have a protein that gives you a, a ratio of 20, then it depends on the intensity of the heavier or the light. Uh, like uh, if you will be able to measure it, but then at some point, if the light goes high and high, then also the low peak here, it will go uh, over the limit of detection and you will be able to actually measure it. And this is the time when you start to see the plateau uh, fit of, uh, on your data. So, and so what we are doing also, so we first uh, try to fit a linear fit and then we also try to fit a linear plus plateau fit. And uh, the best of these two uh, will win. So again, if uh, the plateau linear plus plateau fit will win, then we will take the ratio of the plateau. So here we're going to take this log ratio. Uh, so yes, I guess this is how we are doing the advanced ratio estimation. Um, another thing that we can do, uh, even in the mesh one level labeling. Uh, it's the match between runs, which is a concept that we already discussed uh, before. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can do it also because some people are confused sometimes because the only thing that you can do it uh, when you have label free, but uh, this is not the case. You can do match between runs even if you have label free, MS1 level labeling, and also MS2 level labeling. Uh, but uh, one thing that maybe someone should know here is that you can only match uh, the features that you have both the heavy and the light, so not the quantified ones. So only the ones that you have both heavy and light, this, that are the features that you can actually um, transfer through the runs with match between runs. Another thing is that uh, that we do in Amazon level labeling is that we normalize the peptide ratios. So here you can see a plot of the log peptide ratio and the x-axis and the y-axis is the log peptide intensity. Here, uh, actually, we color them uh, differently, but um, uh, you can see like two populations that they want, they have like a different uh, median, especially in the high intensity, have five minutes, two minutes. Uh, especially in the high intensity, you can see that this population want to differentiate from each other. Uh, why this happens? What are these uh, different colored um, populations? They're actually different labeled peptides. One is with heavy lysine and one is with um, uh, arginine, arginine, heavy arginine. What happens is that uh, when you actually um, buy these heavy arginine and lysines, they have uh, different biases uh, based on the purity of the amino acids. Uh, the thing is that... Uh, they have different biases, so you have to correct. You have to correct differently for these two different populations. So what we're going to do is going to take the median of this each one of this population, and uh, we're going to subtract it for the population, and that's how we normalize. And uh, we should do that in the peptide level here now, because if we don't do it now and we try to do it later in the protein level, then it will be impossible. So you have to do it at that stage. Uh, of course, this is only for the lysine, um, the heavy lysine or the heavy arginine um, populate groups. But of course, you can have um, like um, like 
arranged in between. So you can have like a population that have one heavy lysine and one heavy arginine. So for these populations, how you normalize, if you have enough um, uh, points for this population, then you use their median. But if you don't have enough, then you have to do like um, a linear, let's say, fit in between the heavy arginine and the heavy lysine. This is more of the details for you, I guess. Uh, but in general, just what you want to take out from this plot is that you have to do normalization on the peptide level to correct for some biases that uh, the heavy label uh, label peptide have because of the pur purity of the amino acids that you buy from your different vendors. And I don't have much time, but another thing. And in the protein level, what you're doing you're getting the median of all peptide feature ratios that are associated with the protein. Again, the median is quite a robust measure that uh, we you see that we're using again and again here. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, if you have three only uh, peptide features, if you take the median and one of the uh, ratios, the feature ratios is actually wrong, still you're going to get the correct ratio at the end in the protein level. Uh, so then about MS2 level labeling, actually, you will have a um, um, presentation uh, specifically only about MS2 level labeling, uh, specifically isobaric labeling uh, later in the week. So I think it's okay, the fact that we didn't have time to talk about it. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess I have to stop here and we will continue with the label-free uh, talk presentation. So yeah, thank you so much.